So without further ado, I want us to welcome Hannah to the stage. The graduation project was for my bachelor, uh, Industrial Design at the TUE in Eindhoven. Um, but now I'm currently doing my master's, uh, also Industrial Design at the TUE in Eindhoven. And um, uh, besides working, uh, besides being on the master, I also work at Fabrique, a digital design agency, uh, as a UX designer. Uh, so I combine the working and the studying at the moment. Um, and yes, I was invited because of my presentation at the uh, Digital Design Week, um, where I show my um, uh, yeah, graduation project, but also received a lot of uh, information of how people feel about around this topic. And I'm going to share how I came to this project and also about these feelings of all these people. Um, so I will tell you something more about the road of data, how is data flowing uh, into our lives, and also um, then I will talk a bit about corruption and highlight Datador, which uh, my project is called Datador, uh, and also uh, the process about it. Uh, and then I will end with uh, talking about the role of designers. So, um, yeah, we have a lot of smart products getting in our house. Um, also phones, but also things like a Google Home or a Nest uh, temperature meter or uh, also a smart uh, uh, iRobot ro Roomba uh, going through your house, getting the dust. Um, and all these things, all these products collect a lot of data. Um, and this data is going out of the house to all kinds of servers. And looking at, uh, for example, only the Google Home, is this product listening the whole entire day, hearing what you say, talking to each other? Um, and this data is going out, out of the house. Um, but all these products together give a really detailed uh, image of who you are, what you do, what do you like, what do, don't you like. Um, and this together literally creates a digital twin of you, uh, which tells a lot about you. Um, so looking more into de detail, this is for example an analysis I did of the Google Home, seeing what kind of uh, data is uh, going in and out. So yeah, of course, a voice is uh, recordings are going out, um, but they they also give this for voice recordings to advertisers. So if they, for example, hear you're about having a dog, then the advertisers know that you have a dog, and they will advertise you for um, uh, yeah for dog food or something. Um, um, and yeah, there's a lot of personal information, also like location, that is really valuable uh, or vulnerable also. And looking at the entire house, this is happening. So we have products in the, in the house that all are connected with internet or Bluetooth, and it goes out of the house with the router via internet. And that's an important point, so remember that for later. Um, so corruption. Yeah, uh, you already give a good definition about it. Um, and when I look for me per personally, I really see corruption connected to politics uh, very often. Um, but looking to a broader, in a broader way to this topic, um, it is those ha yeah, misusing power. Um, and we as a society have a certain trust in companies behind products. Uh, they also have a certain power. We believe that they have good products for us. We trust them that they don't harm us. We read their privacy statements. Everything looks good. So um, uh, yeah, we kind of trust them, but they misuse it often. Um, without us knowing it. It's not really transparent all the time, it's just happening behind our back, and we also, um, yeah, if we know it, then probably we don't want to use a product again. So it's a really difficult uh, balance there, like how much do you know, how much will they tell, because it's also their way of getting money, kind of. So it's a really difficult topic on how the transparency, um, yeah, in, those, in this, this topic is going. Um, and when I was talking to a lot of people during the Dutch Design Week, I noticed that, yeah, people that know about it also don't want to know too much about it because they get scared of it. And I thought that is so weird, right? That that there's created created a certain yeah atmosphere around smart products, and some people really like the the, the benefits of it and are focused really on that, and the people that are also focused on the negative parts, also want to look away from it because it's also, yeah, people already have to have a lot of things to worry about. So this is another thing where you can worry about. So um, I believe that, um, yeah, we should find a way of 
not being not yeah not having to worry about this. Uh, so I started this as a statement for my uh, for my project uh, because I believe a home should uh, provide an environment free from corruption and invasion of privacy, allowing for a sense of safety, freedom, and autonomy. Because the home is the place where you are the most yeah yourself basically. So if you're also not if you're also not private there, where can you be more private then? So it's a really uh, yeah important thing for me. So that brought me to my project Datador, uh, where I in the end designed uh, speculative products um, and a service uh, that allow people to control their data again. Um, these are all really familiar in some kind of way. These are really connected to us as humans because I wanted to stay away from the complexity that digital and um, all this technology bring. Uh, I wanted to really make it human again and bring it close to us so that we can have touch it, make it tang tangible, get a feeling like what it does um, immediately by, see by seeing it. So first I needed to get a grip on data. For me personally, data is something really abstract. It is flowing somewhere in the air, it is going in and out and it is, it is you can't feel or touch it. Um, so I started to analyze a lot of products, see what is really happening, how it moves in the house, but also uh, outside. Um, and also, okay, if I have my private, privacy settings really well set, but my friend has not, is, is my privacy still gone? And how is that uh, all connected to each other? Um, so then after that, I started to involve the human because I noticed that I already, have a lot of feelings about this topic, but there are a lot of perspectives on this. So I had a lot of talks with smaller groups of people and see how they felt about it. And I first did, uh, I transformed my house by showing the lines of how data could flow kind of through the house. To show people, okay, this is already happening. This is already flowing from there to there and uh, it's all going out of the house. Um, so get really a, a feeling like, okay, it's really, it, it's, it's already happening. And a lot of them really were kind of shocked. Okay, I didn't think about this before. Um, and others were also really focused on, on the benefits. So they said, okay, I will just take it. Um, but all these insights, I collected them and used them as the start of um, uh, yeah, designing the products. Um, and I already noticed in these kind of sessions that people compared to things that already have a more understanding of. So they started to say things like, data feel like, feels like pollution. Um, okay, that is something that you can clean, for example. So they started to make it already themselves more close to, to them. Um, so that went uh, also the way I went, uh, the metaphorical approach that I took, because I needed to visualize it in a different way than having all these lines of where the data is going. So I imagine myself, okay, the data is going out of the house at the uh, router at the, uh, next to the door. What if I can have a little door there also for the data that I can open if I accept that it's going out and close if I don't accept that it's going out. So um, that was the first metaphor that I have for myself. And when telling this metaphor to other people, I immediately got other ones back. So I had the door, but also you have the labels at your door hanging like, okay, I don't want you to come uh, to uh, sell anything. So that is something that you can have as a metaphor. But also, okay, what if you could open the tab for data and just open or close it and how uh, big can be the water uh, flowing through? Um, so I collected a lot of metaphors and I uh, clustered them based on function. What, what, what kind of function do we want to get out of it? So of course there were some things of filtering. So filtering by blocking, by literally saying, okay, this can't go through, so I stop it. Or filtering by layers. Um, some can go through, others not. Um, how the density of filters are, uh, is there. Uh, but openness also, you also have open close or clean it as this can be seen as pollution. And a first step is also uh, people need to become aware. So how can you become aware of the fact that data is flowing at the moment? Um, so I use this metaphorical approach after that as the base until the, in the entire project. So I started with sketching really things 
yeah, just image visualizations of things that I use products that we already know. So um, also, yeah, cleaning it literally, like just uh, getting all the uh, uh, dust that is coming out of it, uh, stuff like that. Um, so when looking at these kind of products, I started to imagine, okay, how can we really bring this value to the people? Because uh, it's a really broad field where it's happening. So I thought, okay, what other stakeholders are that are involved? We have, of course, the people that use it. You have direct people that are, can be involved, like the European Union, or like the data security um, service point can be there. So I started to imagine, okay, first, who needs to sell these data management products? Um, I, as we don't have a lot of trust in the bigger companies, do we want another company that is also has its own um, uh, values that we need to trust on? So I thought, no, we should, should stay away from that. So we want to have a foundation maybe that sells the products, that has no personal interest and um, helps to really uh, uh, return control to the citizen, but also has, is really close to the policy because I think that is, it should be a foundation connected to the uh, uh, policy makers. Um, and they should be really an advising role in that. Then I thought, okay, you have these products, but what kind of job should be around that? Um, well, maybe we need a data plumber or repairer that you can call and just say, help, I need help. I am totally lost in how it goes, how it flows, and I just need help to set everything wide. Um, and also, yeah, we need in the end a minister of digital infrastructure, a digital police, a digital a data service number that you can call. We also need to have a lot more teachers that are uh, working on data security. So to get these kind of products, we need to, to take a few steps in, in the next years. So all these, these people should, should come. But I also think that, for example, introduction of data labels should be, should be a new thing. Like, we also have these energy labels on, on, on our uh, energy, but what if you can also have uh, privacy labels saying, okay, this is not really good for your privacy and this is, not, well, is, is, is good for your privacy. So all these kind of things need to happen. And that resulted in the data door. Um, I created a shop with a lot of with five products that are all uh, functioning in a different way, uh, but are really closer. So you can recognize them immediately and have a feeling. Um, it is doubtable if these products will work like this in the future. <laughs> I don't think so, but it's, it is um, uh, a way to challenge kind of the technology. It's visualizing in a really clear way, this is what we need as humans. These are the functions that we want to have. Um, so let's challenge the technology to grow towards that instead of us having to act upon the technology all the time, but also set a certain bar like this is what we need. Um, so I will go through them, each of them, to see, explain a bit about them. So the data customs. Um, it is really difficult nowadays to get a feeling of, of what is happening within the product. It's really a black box. So I thought, what if we can just have like a data customs next to your door? So when you enter your house with a new product, it's just scanned and you get information about what data is going in, out, uh, to who it's going, what is happening with it, is it sold to third parties, like all these little details that you now need to do a lot of research for to get this information, but just make it accessible and yeah, right there for you. Another one, data cleaning. Well, as also the people said during my um, um, uh, research with them, uh, data can be seen as pollution. Um, that also needs to be cleaned. And it's just getting much bigger and more all the time. So what if you just would have in your normal cleaning routine also a moment where you'd be like, really, okay, I want to clean it. I want to permanently delete it. Um, this is also possible by already by uh, doing some, uh, yeah, just deleting your history and stuff and cookies. Um, but what if it becomes a really part of your routine? Because I think that is what's missing. People know that they can do something about it, but it's not just a habit. We should change our mindset about it, that it's just a thing that is normal to sometimes just check everything, delete everything, uh, and be aware of it. Um, data moods. Uh, what I also noticed is that uh, what data can be collected or 
what you think can be collected is really uh, connected to what kind of mood you are. When you're working, certain data is, is going in and out, but when you're at, I don't know, uh, watching TV at, at night, then you want to be more like closed off kind of and just have a more private setting maybe. So um, these moments during the day, yeah, it's are really important. So what if you could check in a certain mood and by, by that say, okay, these products are allowed and by these, these products are not allowed to collect the data. Then the data pipe. Um, I can see it's already kind of happening. The data also as uh, just as water and energy flowing through your house. Uh, so what if we also would have a, a pipe for the data uh, where you could filter also. So uh, block it saying, okay, for example, if health data is really important for you, um, uh, yeah, because of a certain reason, then you could say, okay, I want to have the, the health data at home and don't want to share it with a lot of people. So really be specific about what data can go out or not, but also um, looking at the bigger picture, I think it's also, uh, this is something that we really already understand and also calling a data plumper to help you with this is really a, a pattern that can add a lot of value to our lives. Then the data curtains. Um, yeah, just as explained before, data is really connected so during the day. And just as we open and close curtains also during the day, connected to how also how private you want to be, uh, how closed off of the environment outside, uh, we could also have data curtains and thereby also layering uh, different kind of uh, filters over each other. So being more uh, private or less private, um, depending if, for example, people are home or not home. Um, yeah, really connected also to certain rooms in the house. So for example, the room where my brother is gaming the entire day, yeah, there's happening a lot. But for example, the, the washing machine room, maybe not. So like how you see the uh, different rooms and uh, the different preferences there for um, data. So looking at this entire topic, uh, it is really a complex topic. And I believe that the role of designers is there to dismantle this complexity. Um, uh, yeah, I think uh, we should really ensure that people can still be in charge of their own lives and the technology in them. Because what is happening right now is that we are losing the control over it because we have no overview because of the mis missing transparency, but also have no idea how to act upon it. Because, yeah, what can you do as an individual? Yeah, control your privacy settings really well. But what can we do with a bigger society? That's also a difficult thing. Um, so I think that the designer's role is really there. Um, we should ask the critical questions. Uh, yeah, making sure that, the, that at the right tables, the right questions are asked. So uh, being there involved with, with the decision makers. Um, and um, in an ideal situation, the values of all um, stakeholders would be more aligned because that is what happening is happening right now. The values are like at different, at different sides and opposite to each other. And to get these more aligned, we should open up the conversation. And I think a first part is there is inviting the normal people, society, um, and uh, to invite them, they should understand. So uh, these kind of projects, I hope that people get a certain awareness already and that they are able to get to join the conversation. Um, and that's also why I really believe that we should involve the human, uh, the normal human, to just place it at the center of, of technological development, to have all the time their needs at, at the front of the, of the uh, designing um, and looking how we can match the values, yeah, really more in detail. Um, so I think the first step that we can take is starting your own, uh, start taking your own ownership of your data. Um, you can already do a lot to change it. Um, to little things can already make a big difference, but it's just that we are like in, in the busy days that we have, you're not thinking about it all the time. Uh, so it's really valuable to just look into what we can do about it. Uh, so for that, I have a set of cards with data tips for all of you. So later out, they will be provided to all of you. And these can be, are really little, small things, some bigger things, but they can be an inspiration of where you should or could start about, um, yeah, where to begin with this. Uh, because I can feel it's really, it's, it's, uh, 
yeah, a big mountain to work up on. So let's start with these little things to um, yeah, change it already. And I think that was my presentation. I have no clue how long it was, but <laughs> I think that was it. <laughs>